Good morning and welcome to the Express Bet Racing Report with my guy Jim Miller. I'm David Kaplan. We're at Hawthorne here in Stickney, suburban Chicago, and it is Derby Day 2019. 20 horses are going to load in in a few hours, and it's one of my favorite yeah. sporting events on the calendar. Yeah, one of my favorite sporting events, too, and the cool thing about it, it happens rain or shine. You're always going to have a huge crowd. You're always going to have a lot of anticipation, and today's race is really interesting because you're not going to have a heavy favorite. No matter who the favorite is, there's going to be value. There is a ton of money to be made in this race today. All right, so Omaha Beach was the clear favorite, yep. and when you factored in the rain at Churchill, even a bigger favorite, the best in terms of being able to be what we call a mutter. So with Omaha Beach out, did that shock you? Uh, it did shock me. There were some questions going into the race cap about Omaha Beach, and they were worried about a quarter crack, a little crack in the hoof. But then it came out on Wednesday that this horse had an entrapped epiglottis, which is basically just a minor breathing issue. But with a racehorse, if you have any type of breathing issue, you really have to take your time. When you have a horse this good, you especially have to take your time. Now, here's the cool thing about it. Kudos to Richard Mandela, the trainer. Kudos to the ownership group, too, because they could have waited till Friday morning or Saturday morning and said, we're scratched. It's going to be a field of nine. Instead, they declare on Wednesday. So what happens is Bodie Express, who's on the also eligibles, gets a chance to get in and participate in the Derby. So that's something that I think is very commendable by the connections of Omaha Beach. And it completely changes the race because this was going to be the favorite, a horse that's won in the slop. And now with that horse out, this is a wide open affair. All right. In terms of the health issue that yeah. Omaha Beach is dealing with, is it not Omaha Beach out of the Preakness, out of the Belmont? Is it ended racing career? What does it do? It doesn't end the racing career, so that's a good thing about it. Basically, this is something where they do a surgery, and, and it's a very brief surgery. It'll take place early next week, and they say typically you're on the shelf for three or four weeks for a horse before you return to training. What happens this year for a horse like Omaha Beach, because you're as talented as you are, they'll probably back things up a little bit. You have so many great races later on in the year. You have the Travers later on in the year. You have the Breeders' Cup Classic and that. I say they're going to they're gonna come back shoot for those races at the end of the year, and then see kind of where they can go from there. All right, so this horse will eventually yeah. get back on the track. Oh, yeah, they'll be back on the track. It's no physical issue when it comes to a leg or anything like that, and everything will be just fine. And the horse does need to get back on the track yeah. to increase breeding rights, correct? Right. Oh, yeah, the more you can earn, definitely. The, you want to get graded stakes earnings, and that's one thing for Omaha Beach, where he has some with winning the Arkansas Derby. Of course, you want those triple crown earnings when it comes to moving onward to the breeding shed, but with this horse out now, they will have to get back to the racetrack, fight, try to get those classic earnings that mile and a quarter distance or further, but I think they'll be able to do it down the road. All right, so you said no clear favorite right. now. Does that also change as the weather impacts the race? Yeah, it definitely does change as the weather impacts the race. It's not too bad here in the Chicagoland area. In Kentucky at Churchill Downs, they're expecting rain all day, so it's going to be slop. Very few in this field have run on an off track, so it really is going to open things up you're not going to know who's going to take to the slop until they run the race. All right, so let's take a look at the first eight horses in the field of the 2019 Run for the Roses, the Kentucky Derby. And you look in the one hole, you've got War of Will. You've got Tax, By My Standards, Gray Magician. Those are the first four. Let's talk about War of Will. Yeah, War of Will is a horse that everybody talked a lot about, kind of moving along things with the uh, Triple Crown Trail in Louisiana. But this was a horse that had a lot of trouble at the start of the Louisiana Derby. It's the same race that By My Standards won, who was in this group of 4-2. And War of Will, you see a bad step early on in the race. By My Standards kind of got a perfect trip and as you watch this horse close in the lane he was able to rally he was all out the win though a lot of people are liking this horse off the race but i'll tell you by my standards from the three hole really going to kind of have to work out a trip from the inside all right so war of will and i remember a few weeks ago we're doing one of the shows and we talked about well that's a really good horse right. when you get the dreaded one hole is it almost impossible to win? It is. I mean, it's it's an all-or-nothing race for War of Will from the inside. They have no choice but to gun it from the inside, try to get that position early on. Question is, how much horse do you use up into that first turn? If you get real lucky and can clear, and then with the slop, everybody kind of moves out, maybe you have a chance, but this is a horse with a speed type of running style. They're going to have to get away from the gate really cleanly to have a shot. Otherwise, they're done. I think so. All right, let's talk about... The next four horses here, Improbable, Vacoma, Maximum Security, and Tacitus. 
Uh, look, Improbable's <laughs> got a lot of love with Irad Ortiz, six to one. So there is some money as well. When you look at a group of four horses right next to one another, Cap, this is probably your best quartet of horses here. You have Improbable, who's been very good coming from the barn of Bob Baffert. Five starts, three wins, two second place efforts. Really good in the Arkansas Derby behind Omaha Beach. So you know he can run in the slop too. Then you go right next to him with Vacoma. He's 20 to one in the morning line. His race in the bluegrass was exceptional. He came charging late. He's not the prettiest running style of horses, but it really doesn't matter if you can get there on time. So a horse like Vacoma should be able to settle back and then run on quick, but he's not gonna be too far out of it. And then you get next to him, Maximum Security is kind of that wise guy horse here because winner of the Florida Express Bet Florida right, Derby. And ran a huge race and look up and down the field, Cap. When you look at buyer speed figures, with Omaha Beach out, there's one horse in the field that's run a hundred buyer speed figure or better, and that's Maximum Security, and he's done it twice. He's the other horse that's going to be on the lead. If War of Will can't clear from the inside, this could be the horse that cruises along on the front end there. He did so in his last race in the Express Bet Florida Derby. He could very easily do so again. And then you get right next to him with a horse like Tacitus. He needs a pace set up in front of him, so he's going to know what the pace is from the horse that breaks right next to him. He's had really nice trips in the last two, and that last race in the Wood Memorial, he settled back. He charged home late. It's Jose Ortiz aboard again, and he does draw very well in the Derby. All right. Blue Q Parfait is also a horse I wanted to ask you about. We're going to go through the rest of the horses, but that's a horse that has had some success overseas. Right. Where are you on that horse? You know what? It's interesting because sometimes you look at these races overseas and you say, okay, it's an automatic toss. And you looked at Thunder Snow a few years ago winning the UAE Derby. Coming over here, a really tough start in the Kentucky Derby. He just went back and won back-to-back -back Dubai World Cup. So there are some very talented horses coming from there. So this is a horse that you never know. He's going to be overlooked at the windows. He'll be a huge price. You can't take away that last victory, though. That was a big effort in Dubai. All right. Before, we'll go through the rest of the horses in a little bit. But if you were saying to someone who's tuned in this morning, they got their coffee, they got the newspaper, they go out and they do a little research. They're like, I don't really play a lot, but I set up an express bet account. What would you tell them to do as they get ready for the Derby to go? Here's the cool thing about the Derby this year. Because there's so much value in here, Cap, you can pick multiple horses that you like and bet multiple horses across the board. So win, place, and show, and still get a return there just for the fact that there is going to be no heavy favorite in the spot. Find a couple horses at prices that you like. Maybe pair them up in an exacta box, even if it's for a dollar or two. The exacta should come back no less than $100 on a $2 wager. It's probably going to be much, much more. But if you find a handful of horses that you like, it gives you multiple horses to chair for in the race. You don't have a lot of exposure there, and then you can go out and try to attack the race. A friend of mine said to me, yeah, I don't play too much, but I play the Triple Crown races. Yeah. But then he looks and goes, ah, that horse is 30 to 1. It's got no chance. Throw it out. Throw yeah. that out. Yeah. Don't even look at the numbers. Right. Just play the horses you like because there right. is a shot. Well, and here's the thing about the Kentucky Derby. You need a point system to get in. We talked about it throughout the course of the show. You need 40 points to get in. That means there's horses that have had to run one, two, three, and top-notch preps all the way through just to get into this race. They're all very talented horses. They can't all be the favorite. So because of that, some horses get overlooked and really get overlooked on the board. There's horses that will be very competitive in this race. That'll be 50 to one plus. All right, we've got another dozen horses to review. We've got to tell you about the bonuses from Express Bet. You need to set up your account, expressbet.com. A ton of great bonuses. We'll take you through all that so you can enjoy your Derby Saturday and have a chance to make some serious money. With Jim, I'm Cap. We'll be right back here at Hawthorne. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with Express Bet. Sign up for an Express Bet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign up bonus.
We roll on here on the Express Bet Racing Report on Derby Saturday, one of the great days in American sports. You know, you look back and you think, okay, the Derby's amazing. A Game 7 in any event's amazing. Indy 500 is a huge thing for uh, auto racing enthusiasts. But for me, the Kentucky Derby's at the top of the mountain. Well, and here's the cool thing about the Derby 2 cap. There's two different groups there that are involved in the race. There, there's the athletes and th those performing on the racetrack in the Derby. But then the great thing about horse racing is everybody can get involved with the wagers because with parimutuel wagering, you're playing against one another. That's how the odds are set. That's how the payouts are set. So really, everybody nationally can be involved in this event, and that's the cool thing about it. Over 150,000 people there on site, millions watching on air, and everybody can have action on the race, and that is really the coolest thing of it all. All right, let's go back to the next grouping of horses, horses uh, 9 through 15. We already touched on Plu Q Parfait, Cutting Humor, yeah. High Call, Code of Honor, Win, 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 and Master Fencer. Yeah, Cutting Humor is a horse that's going to be completely overlooked in this race cap. They're 30 to 1 in the morning line. I think the horse goes off at 50, 60, 70 to 1. Wow. And here's the reason why. Cutting Humor ran a good race in that race in the Sunland Derby. Was able to rally late. That was a good victory in holding off another twist of fate. Everybody talked about, oh, another twist of fate ran a huge race, which he did in that race. Then he had to come back, race in the bluegrass. Still didn't get enough points to get into the Derby. Cutting Humor won that race. But here's the thing. He will be overlooked. He's going to be a huge price. I don't know if I like him or not when I put my wagers in there, but it wouldn't surprise me if he clunks up underneath in the gimmick. So I'll be curious to see what we get out of uh, cutting humor, but he will be completely overlooked on the board. There are some people that like win, win, win. Yeah. There are some. Yeah, I know you have a friend who says he's a count out. A right. horse isn't going to be there at the end. Yeah, win, win, win's a really interesting horse because you look, he started out his career really good early on. He won two of his first three starts at two, and then you look at this year he's run okay but his running styles really kind of changed he was a speed horse early on in his career and now his last two races you talk about stone closer he's had to come from way back so the key for him it's going to be much like that 2005 derby with Giacomo you need an insane pace up front early on it needs to completely fall apart for him to come home in time I just don't see that pace happening. Some people do. I just don't see it unfolding on Derby Day. That 2005 race, Giacomo still yeah. goes down in the annals, man. It broke my heart because I was told by someone at the track yep. who's in the industry, that horse can win the race. I was on my way to bet it, and that's another story, but I... <laughs> Never ended up putting a nickel on the race. Well, and, and you can't give up on some of these horses, too. You look at Giacomo. Look at Mind That Bird. Calvin Burrell flying up the rail. That's a horse that finished fourth in the Sunland Derby that year. That, that's the coolest thing about this race because of all the talent. And again, now you throw slop into the mix, too. It, it really opens things up. If you go back, and I advise everyone, go back and watch the race that Mind That Bird yeah. won. And Calvin, like to call him Calvin Bow Rail. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like the seas parted, right. and he had that shot right across the rail, and he just looked back, see you later. Yeah, and that's what it is. And riders are going to have to take chances in the derby. When you have 20 horses, there's going to be a time where, unless you're the horse on the lead and you're just staying out of the dirt the whole way around, you're either going to have to shoot a gap in between horses, choose to go wide, or choose to stay on the rail and just hope it opens up. Now, the one thing that the way it may play at Churchill Downs on Saturday is with it being sloppy, these guys are going through five, six, seven pairs of goggles. So they may get to a point where they're running low on goggles, and that choice may have to be, I got to go out to the center so I can see on my racehorse, and that may open up some gaps along the inside. So I'll be curious to see. It becomes a rider's race in that final quarter of a mile. All right, we'd like you to go to expressbet.com. You could sign up. They've got $20 bonuses, $100 bonuses, $500 bonuses. You pick the bonus amount that works best for you. Go to expressbet.com. You could sign in on your phone. You could sign in on your tablet. Obviously on your computer. I have it signed in right now here on my laptop. So go to expressbet.com and have some fun playing the Kentucky Derby today with us and try and make a little bit of money. We'll take a time out. We'll take you through the final grouping of horses. Ren Carruthers is going to join us. And we'll give you our picks. It's the Express Bet Racing Report on NBC Sports Chicago from Hawthorne.
whether you're at home or at the track. Have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Welcome back to the Express Bet Racing Report at Hawthorne with Jim Miller, who is an absolute brainchild on this stuff. I'm David Kaplan. We'll get our picks and see if we can make you a little bit of money later. But let's take you through the final grouping of horses for the Kentucky Derby. We've gone through the first 15, but let's go to 16. Game winner will probably enter the stall today. The favorite. I agree with you, especially with Omaha Beach out. Game winner's a horse. This is the champion two-year-old. This is a horse that will take a lot of action. He really hasn't done anything wrong. He's been the runner-up in his last two races. It's Bob Baffert, though. Bob Baffert's won multiple triple crowns recently. Game winner will take a lot of action. He's coming out of a race with Roadster, the other Bob Baffert horse there. And these are the two horses in the San Anita Derby that ran huge races to finish 1-2. And Roadster is interesting because you get a new rider. Mike Smith had taken off to ride Omaha Beach. That horse is out. Florent Drew named on Roadster, but this is a guy that's familiar with big races. He rode Gunrunner in the past, so he knows what he's doing, but talk about a big stage to jump on a horse for the first time. All right, and you've got Joel Rosario on game winner. You've got Roadster, you mentioned. And then there's a horse that some people actually like, Long Range Toddy. Yeah, Long Range Toddy's an interesting horse, too. He ran a really good race, too, back in Arkansas when he settled back early on. John Court with a very good ride. And John Court's a guy that's in his mid-50s. He's a veteran jock. He's ridden some of the biggest races before. He was able to weave that horse through traffic to get up in time. It was kind of a ride that Calvin Burrell gave mine that bird years ago. So John Court and Long Range Toddy could close late to be into the mix underneath so we'll see how that horse runs and then you get some horses on the outside at long prices but they could sneak into the mix okay Bodie Express yep. I did some research this morning on Bodie Express who's now in because right. Omaha Beach is out he was the next on the list he's going to come out of the 20 hole 21 right. and looking at my predictor form sheet it said breakout horse Bodie Express. You're not buying it. I don't know if I'm buying it. I mean, here's the thing about Bodie Express. One, you're coming from the far outside because you're the also eligible. Two, you're still a maiden. You've never won a race. You've never crossed the wire first in your life. And three, the question is, what kind of pace setup do you get? Because this horse got a perfect trip in the Express Bet Florida Derby. Got to chase maximum security the whole way around when there wasn't much pace to chase. And he just, instead of went going to challenge the horse, he said, yeah, I'll follow around. I'll, I'll take my second place money in that race. It's $200,000 and enough points to get in here. So Bodie Express, they're really going to have to try to work from the outside to clear and then just try to kind of hold on late. All right. The third member of our team is the awesome Ren Carruthers. She is a guru in pedigree breeding, all sorts of things that can help you make an informed decision. Ren files this report. So you all know I'm the petty geek, and the first thing I look for in a Kentucky Derby contender is stamina. In my opinion, the best source of stamina in the modern-day thoroughbred is AP Indy. This Hall of Famer has the Mile and a Quarter Breeders' Cup Classic and the Mile and a Half Belmont Stakes on his list of accomplishments. And he's a son of Triple Crown champion Seattle Slew and out of a daughter, a graded stakes winning daughter, of Triple Crown champion Secretariat. He's genetic gold. In fact, if you look at the last 10 runnings of the Kentucky Derby, five winners have AP Indy in the pedigree. Those horses are Super Saber in 2010, Orb in 2013, California Chrome in 2014, Always Dreaming in 2017, and Triple Crown Champion Justify in 2018. This year, AP Indy is represented by eight runners. Yes, that's right, eight. Tax, improbable, maximum security, Tacitus, cutting humor, game winner, long range toddy, and Bodie Express, who draws in with the scratch of Omaha Beach. Another reason to like these horses in particular apart from the stamina edge, is if you go back to those five Kentucky Derby winners with AP Indian in the pedigree, all of them, with the exception of California Chrome, won on a wet surface, and we're expecting rain at Churchill Downs. So who's my pick? Well, the answer is simple, and you probably already know it if you follow me, and that is Game Winner. I think Game Winner has legitimate excuses for losing both of his races this year. As I've mentioned before with the Rebel, go back and watch the start. He breaks on his toes and stays on them for a couple more jumps. So 
for him to get up in the photo finish with Omaha Beach was a wow factor for me. In the Santa Anita Derby, while the track wasn't dead, it wasn't fast either, and he went wide the whole way, and in my opinion, ran a more impressive race than Roadster, who's very likable in the Derby also. Um, as far as game winner's pedigree goes, more reason to like him on an off track is the fact that his sire, Kenny Ride, who won the mile and a quarter Pacific Classic, is a son of Ride the Rails. Ride the Rails is a son of Crypto Clearance, who loved the mud. And then on Game Winner's bottom side, he's out of Indian Giving, an unraced daughter of AP Indy, and 2006's Eclipse champion older mare, Fleet Indian, whose grade one wins include the personal Ensign and the Bell Dame. If you trace this female family back, you'll eventually hit Blue Hen Mare Extraordinaire. La Troyenne. She's responsible for the likes of Lusanda, Buck Passer, Mine Shaft, Easy Goer, Smarty Jones, Sea Hero, Go for Gin, Judy the Beauty, Affectionately, Poker, who's the damn sire, Seattle Slew, and Silver Charm. The list goes on and on. Bottom line, Game Winner has the credentials from a pedigree standpoint to what we've already seen on track. He won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile over Churchill Downs 1,235 foot stretch. So all I got to say is, Game on. Back to you, Captain Jim. Thank you very much, Ren. So as we look at this race, it's so easy. I asked you this earlier in the show to look and go, oh, that horse is two to one. I probably right. have to throw that horse in there. Right. If you don't like the horse, especially today with Omaha Beach out and a lot of rain, don't get caught up in numbers. Right. Don't worry about numbers. Don't worry about odds, especially. You can worry a little bit about post positions, but here's the key, too. You're watching on ExpressBet.com. Pull up the races from Churchill Downs earlier in the day. Do yourself a favor, even if you have it on in the background, because there's a lot of time in between races. Watch those races, Cap, because you're going to see how the track plays. You're going to see if the inside's good or if horses are getting bogged down on the inside and closing on the outside. You'll find out if speed holds or if it's a closer's racetrack, because this is a track that it does drain well, but you're talking constant rain all day long in Louisville. Watch those races earlier on the day. Throw a few bucks on horses, maybe build up your bankroll for the Derby, but it's definitely worth taking that time to invest in. If you're going to wager on the Derby, get a look at some races prior on the card. I talked to Jerry Bailey, and he said, if I was riding in this, I would have three, four extra pair of yeah. goggles, and you might have to get to the center of the track, he said, because you're going to be filthy, and some horses do not want that mud kicked up. Right. Others revel in it. Right, and that's the thing. Look back a couple of years ago at Always Dreaming. He was the only horse that was clean at the end because he got out there on the front and just got the cruise along on the front end. Every other horse was caked in mud. And think about how great of athletes these riders are. Okay, you're riding a 1,000-pound-plus animal. You're going 35 to 40 miles per hour. You're, you're weighted, balancing on two-inch pieces of metal and you're riding with a whip in one hand, the horse guiding it, and flipping down pairs of goggles the whole time. So there's a whole lot of thought process that goes into it. So eventually it comes to a point, okay, do you say, do I just flip out to the middle and just try to stay clean and stay in the clear? Some riders will make that decision. Some may panic a little bit. Others and some of those veteran guys may say, hey, I'm going to split horses and take my chances. All right, make sure you go download expressbet.com. Put it on your laptop, your tablet, your phone right now. Sign up, get yourself a great bonus, 20, 100, 500. Start having some fun today on the Derby and the races leading up to the race at Churchill Downs. Quick timeout. We'll come back, give you our picks, hopefully make you a bunch of money here on NBC Sports Chicago. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Right, so this is the segment you've all waited for. You want to know, who should I put my money on and how rich can I get? 
He's Jim Miller. I'm David Kaplan. Okay, a lot of us rely on you and your expertise. As you handicap this race, where are we going? You know what? The way that I'm looking at the race here, Cap, I'm looking at horses that have just been doing things right. Not horses that are looking for excuses, horses that had a bad trip or anything. I want to find the horses that have done things correctly. So because of that, the horse I'm going to play across the board is Tacitus. This is a horse that's had two starts this year, lightly raced, only four starts on his career, comes from the barn of Bill Mott. The two races this year have been good. The pace was quick up front. The horse rallied and won at Tampa. The pace was quick, but not flying in the wood. And again, the horse rallied and looked impressive. You're making a progression in each and every start, and I think this horse could continue to progress. Breeding suggests that the mile and a quarter is no problem at all, so I'm going to play 20 across on Tacitus. Now after that, four other horses Horses are going to go into my exacta box. And these are all horses that are logical horses in here. I'm going to throw Improbable into the mix. I think that's a horse that should be tough. I'm going to throw Maximum Security in. Again, a horse that has run some good races and could be out there on the front end and hasn't done anything wrong. Then after that, you look at the two horses that are coming out of the Santa Anita Derby, Game Winner and Roadster. Again, they're doing everything right. They're consistently running good races. Now you're saying, okay, where's my 30 to 1, 40 to 1, 50 to 1? You're not going to have a heavy favorite in the Derby cap. You could get two of these horses at 8-1 to one and 10-1 to one in that exacta, and it's going to pay huge. So that's what I'm looking for. Five-horse exacta box for me, 5, 7, 8, 16, 17. It's a $100 wager there, 20 across on Tacitus. If that horse wins, you'll get a nice return. All right. Now, you want to know what I'm going to do? Yeah. All right. I did a bunch of research. I had my picks, and then I talked to a friend of mine who does this for a living as well, like you do. He is at Churchill Downs, and he said, I'm telling you, a horse that looks really good, is training sharp, is a better horse than people realize, is the four gray magician. It's going to go off at what? Over, over 100 to 1. Over 100 to 1. 50 to 1 in the morning line. This horse will be, the, I think, the longest price on the board. And might be the longest price to ever win the Derby. If, if it, it wins, it will be. Turn the trip. Oh, yeah. So... This same guy gave me Giacomo. I left Giacomo out, never did anything with it, and of course it won at 57 to 1. So I'm going to throw the four in there. Won't be my pick okay. to win, but I'm going to box the four, five, six, seven, and 16. I like the six horse Vacoma with Javier Castellano up. It is 20 to 1 in the morning line. I think it's a better horse than people yeah. realize, and I'm going to play it 20 across the board, $5 exact a box. Four, five, six, seven, and 16. Here's the thing about Vacoma, too. People are going to get scared off of the horse because his running style isn't the prettiest. He has a tendency to flare one of his front legs out when he goes. But the thing is, he still hits right in stride. He still goes very quickly. He was good enough to win the Bluegrass by daylight. And he was the horse that had to win that race to get enough points to get into the Derby. So this is a horse that could be progressing in the right direction if he just continues to do so. And he will be overlooked on the board. He'll be a big price. If you hit that, you're going to have a ton of money going into the Preakness. Yeah, have that and if I could get great magician. If you magician, get great magician in another mix, we, I may never hear the end of it in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you probably won't. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. Those are our picks. You make your picks. Again, go to expressbet.com and you can go out and set yourself up with a bonus of 20, 100, 500, whatever you choose, whatever your comfort level is. Enjoy it. Have fun. For Jim, our great crew, I'm David Kaplan. May all your tickets be winners. We'll see you.